Come on in, guys. What is up? Come on in. Join me in the new setup. What do you think? New camera. Look at this lens. Sigma. 60 millimeter, I think. Um, but still. But still, I need to do a lot of stuff to make this a little bit better. Because, I don't know, my screen is there and I have a screen and it's, 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 it's crazy. Right? And I'm always looking at that side. But, but now the camera is that side. And I actually also use it that side, so it's, it's I don't know where to look. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, look at this. Look at this guy from, from close up. Look at this. An insane beast right here. Holy crap. Joseph Wells just discovered your channel. Love your videos, my guy. Hey, thanks so much, man. I much appreciate that. Like I said before, it's not me. It's the community that makes this channel. It is what it is. Let's, uh, oh, wait, before I, uh, let me do some administration, of course. Let's press enter everywhere. That's the thing. Um, and now Twitter, boom, just like that. Get involved. The same shenanigans as like usual. Facebook, what is up, man? Facebook, once again, it's a long time no see, not gonna lie. Um, okay, today we're gonna do something. It's my mousey. Look at this. It's crazy. You can see it. Look at that. Today we're gonna do something uh, different. Um, we are gonna do some more distributed programming stuff. We are going to uh, implement uh, metrics. We're going to implement a middleware, uh, and we're gonna fetch mess. We're gonna basically do Prometheus metrics. That's what we're gonna do, right? Because if you have multiple services, actors, whatever, that are basically uh, communicating with each other, you need to measure uh, a lot of stuff, right? Um, better quality, my man. It is, man. This lens is. <laughs> A lot of money. Zoom square. Yes. Look at this, guys, man. I'm, I'm getting pro. I'm turning into a professional. I'm leveling up. Isn't that amazing? I also have these uh, foam, foam, sound foam on my walls because <laughs> I don't know. I want to be a professional. You know what I mean? Um, how are you able to do these projects? I'm learning Go right now. I don't know where to start and start building high quality projects. Man, listen, uh, we're going to cover these things um, in a video. <clears throat> because we're also going to do a React video today uh, uh, at the end of the stream. If my camera holds it, because I'm using the Sony A6100 and it's always overheat after a couple of hours. Um, but you just need to build stuff. Just build stuff, right? Make projects. Uh, try to copy projects. You know what I mean? Uh, everything, anything that can give you dopamine. And just build, build, build. And over time, you're going to get better anyway, right? And don't let you distract yourself from tech Twitter, tech YouTube, with all these fancy concepts, ignore them. Just ignore them. Ignore. 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 All right. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, but before we start, guys, um, I want to take this moment to tell us a little bit about the new sponsor, right? The new sponsor of the stream. And that's going to be myself all right so basically for the people that don't know i'm uh, making this full-time godev program course whatever you want to name it is basically designed uh for people that are willing to be uh not to learn go of course to learn go but basically people that want to willing to be a professional an industry industry professional in golang and what's the main topics of uh being a professional in golang in the industry and that is APIs and microservices, right? Cloud infrastructure and all that stuff. And we are going to cover these things, right? Um, in the full-time GoDev program, it's not 100% complete yet, but we are far. We are very, very, very far. Look at this. Boom. Here, a sneak peek. What are we covering? We're covering uh, <clears throat> a complete introduction to Golang, uh, just to get you up to speed if you have no, um, <laughs> if you have no experience. We're going to cover mastering concurrency, practical examples, all that shenanigans. We are making a hotel reservation JSON API backend. Look at these videos. Look at these, these times, man. 40 minutes, 30 minutes. It's insane. Me and you, we are going to be together for a very, very long time. Look at this. Booking is API, admin, authorization, cancel bookings, test fixtures, advanced testing, all that stuff. And we're also going to cover building microservices. Um, that's what I'm working on right now. And last but not least, how to land the job, all that stuff. Go check it out. And... My treat to you, you're going to get the complete blockchain from scratch. Not the one on YouTube, a new one. Yes. All right. Go to fulltimegodev.com. 
and uh, give me all your money. Anyway, that was a joke. Actually not, but hey. <coughs> all right. What do you use in ORM? Nothing. We don't use ORMs. Okay, so basically today we are gonna do, uh, yes, let's do, first of all, what we're gonna do here is it's clear on the screen, yes, this. We are gonna do um, a get branch, get branch minus D, uh, we're gonna say prom, boom, prom not found. What's going on here? Oh, minus D, that's bad. Um, I'm, I'm choking. Uh, get checkout. Um, prom. Holy crap, guys. I was choking. Why? I was kidding. Anyway, doesn't matter. So basically, uh, we have this new branch. We're going to boom. Actually, to be honest, that's bad. Man, I need to warm up. Not going to lie. I was in the gym for a very long time. I was squatting double body weight today, man. And I'm still pumped as fuck. So what we're gonna do, <coughs> we're gonna go into the examples. Basically, for the people that don't know, I'm making this Hollywood uh, actor framework, and uh, which is basically for distributed systems. And we are going to make it so we can actually use Prometheus metrics inside of our actors uh, in a very, very handy way. And <coughs> in the full-time GoDev program, I'm also covering uh, how to add uh, instrumentation, metrics, logging, and all that stuff to your microservices. But it's not with the Hollywood framework, it's in the it's with ProtoBuffer and all that stuff. You will see, you will see if you're uh, a student of that program. So what we're gonna do here is, I'm gonna make a new folder, I'm gonna call this uh, metrics maybe. And in this folder, I'm gonna make a new file, it's gonna be main.no. Yes, main.go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's basically the Vim plugin uh, did some shit already. That's that's all good. I was a little bit uh, worried here. So the first thing we're gonna do is let me quickly check uh, check out my B. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, we have a concept here of can I split my screen without being? Yes, I can. So we have the concept of the hook middleware, and this is basically um, how we can actually hook into some stuff, hooks, middleware, you know what I mean? The classic the classic middleware pattern. Um, <clears throat> I'm actually, to be honest, a little bit, um, I'm still at the beach shipping money at not gonna lie. So we're gonna say type, uh, <clears throat> I don't know how we're gonna call this, it's a name of an actor, give me some examples, give me some good names. We're gonna say foo here, uh, there's gonna be a structure, that's fine. No state, we're gonna implement, um, the receive method. I'm gonna say f pointer to foo receive c is gonna be an actor dot context. <coughs> Whoa. And uh, yeah, that's fine. Then we're gonna say switch based on the context mm, msg based on the context uh, message type. By the way. Right, and it's a case actor started. No, it's no pointer actually, to be honest. Uh, actor started. This is basically, before we do the Prometheus metrics, we need to do this, guys, first. So we have something uh, we can play around with. Actor started, we could do actor uh, stopped. All fine, all fine. Actually, I'm gonna do this, underscore um, equals msg for the compiler. That's all good, actually. Let's print this out. Print talent. Um, who started? Who cares? All right, the next thing we're gonna do is make a new engine. We're gonna say E is going to be actor's new engine. All right, just like that. And then we're gonna basically spawn our beautiful foo. Pit. Uh, <coughs> pit, 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 as process ID is going to be E spawn. Foo, we can't, we need to have a new foo, uh, new foo, and that's going to be, <clears throat> man, I'm, ah! I'm so sorry, I'm dying, it's going to be an actor receiver, <laughs> why is it an actor receiver, it's an interface, because we're receiving stuff, right, you know what I mean, uh, and foo, it's fine here, boom, 
and then foo heat and we're gonna give this a name foo look at that and then we have a pit and we're gonna say time sleep i know it's a little bit nasty but you know that i'm nasty time sleep time uh second times five or two it's fine and declare name foo new foo new foo pet declared not used no problem we fix that we fix that my man um a deep pit deep pit pit boom go run examples from child prox no 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 matrix by the way uh main dot go boom all right you see um started foo has started the process has started everything has started everybody is ready to party uh new them yes Sometimes I use VS Code, but that's because it uh, depends on demonstrational purposes, right? Depends how I feel. <laughs> um, wait, I'm going to answer all the questions later on. Wait, before we do this, I'm going to start recording real quick. I am an idiot. Uh, if the stream dies, I love you all. I should be fine, right? I should be fine. All right, so now we have our actors uh, set up, right? Uh, we have the foo is basically our actor. It has no state. It doesn't really matter uh, for now. It has the receive method, so it can start receiving messages, right? So let's do that first. Uh, let's send a message. We are gonna say here um, engine don't send don't dot send to the spit, and we're gonna send. And we could do a legit everything. If you do it with a remote over the network, you need to use proto buffer. But if you do it locally, we can use whatever the f we want. And that's going to be, um, I'm going to send it foo. Is that too much foo today, right? That basically means, uh, actually, to be honest, we could make our own uh, type here. Type um, message struct <coughs> data string. Doesn't really matter. And then we're going to center this, and we're going to send here uh, message foo. And if you really want to be good, you do this. For the ability. All right. Uh, let's see if I can run this. Boom. Foo started. Okay, we don't do uh, case message. What am I doing? Look at this guy. Uh, we're gonna say at sprint yet. Join this boy here. Received a message uh, data. Boom. Boom. Received foo. All good. You see, I was looking there because my camera is now there. So I need to basically do some muscle memory. Okay, everything is now set up. Um, so now we're going to basically um, set the middleware up, right? And if the middleware is set up, then we can go into installing Prometheus, which is already done. But I'm going to show you everything, right? I'm going to show you everything because it's very important and in Golang it's so easy and it's just, I mean, you're gonna get a pay check raise for sure and give me 10%. Um, okay, cool. So what we're gonna do is each time, right? Each time we receive this message here, foo, uh, this one received foo, we're gonna do some metrics, right? We wanna know how long it took uh, for this message. We wanna know, uh, we wanna know everything. You know what I mean? Uh, just like a girl, they wanna know everything or a woman. Um, how are we going to do this? So what I'm thinking to do is um, I'm going to make here I'm going to call this prom metrics and it's going to be a structure so we can actually uh, do some stuff later on and then we need to do a trick and I need to check how I did this because I forgot so we need to have with hooks here uh, let me copy this thing let's put some things, things over here, comment that out. What do we need still? This thingy with hooks. Let's copy that. Just for the, actually, to be honest. <clears throat> and then kill this screen. All right. I'm going to uh, comment this out. Yes. We have a problem here. This G. Get him out of here. Okay, so we're going to spawn uh, this actor, but we're going to spawn it with middleware, and it's going to be with matrix. So we're going to do something like this, func p pointer to prom matrix, and we're going to say here, um, 
with matrix or something i have no clue that's going to be this function here which is very weird an actor receive func it's going to return an actor to receive func it's fine and to be honest do we need that can we not just do we will do it later on it doesn't matter let's copy this here boom missing return that's all fine and then we need to return this func I'm getting funky just like that cannot use func next actor Um, what's going on here? Return func next, yeah. Return func c actor context, yes. Oh wait, I see, I see what's going on here. Uh, with metrics, going to be this guy, which return this guy. Looking good to me. All right. Um, what is up, look Then, what is up? What is up? I will answer. I will answer the questions all, uh, all, all, all together, all together later on, later on, guys. No worries, no worries, no worries. I got your back, um, but I don't want to be out of out of focus, right? So now we have this pro matrix uh, with matrix thing here. So what we're gonna do is, um, I'm gonna check here if I can access the message itself because we need that. So we're gonna say. Um, FMT, let's do this. Start is going to be a time now. I'm going to do that later on. Um, print LN. Message from intercepted. Intercepted. If that's intercepted. See, message. Looks good to me. And then we're going to call next. You know that? With the context. You know what I mean? Classic middleware shenanigans. <clears throat> okay, so the next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna boot up this thing with an actor uh, dot with middleware. <laughs> like this. And then we're gonna say uh, prom. Yeah, we're gonna make a constructor. We're gonna make a constructor. No worries, guys. But now we're gonna not do it. We're gonna do it later on because there is nothing to construct, right? We're gonna say. Maybe this pointer then, uh, prime matrix, just like this. And then we're going to say, with matrix. Cannot coil pointer method. Okay, okay, it's fine, it's fine, no problem, hey. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, Learn everything in here, paste that in here. Uh, delete everything in here, and then we're gonna say that the p handler or p matrix p matter. Let's make it good. P actually, to be honest, p matrix is this guy, and we're gonna do p matrix. Cannot call pointer with matrix from. Oh, boom, boom, what's going on? Oh yeah, I see, it's a fucking, yeah, okay. Okay, so you cannot do that in Go, because we can't. So we're gonna make this first this one, delete this one, and then do this one, and say uh, with matrix this one. And now I made a mistake. Uh, actor, uh, maybe not another one. Yeah, okay, cool, we're done, right? And if we, right now, if we do this again, we're gonna, uh, Run this thing. You see now we have intercepted uh, one. This is going to be the actor started, the uh, actor initialized, actor um, started, and this is going to be intercepted the full message. All working fine. Cool. Right. Um, what is my ID? It's a Neo Vim. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is actually install um, Prometheus. So how is it going to work? First of all, what I'm going to do, go to a GitHub. Uh, you see this guy here? Well, let me zoom in. Boom, 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 boom. 150 for the blind homies. <clears throat> this is an example from uh, Prometheus Client Golang. And what we're going to do is, the only thing we're going to do in this example is copy this. Yes. That's 
correct. Uh, so we're going to say clear the screen, go, get, we paste that in, boom, just like that. Of course, we made a mistake. Uh, that's a problem. But that's no problem because we are problem solvers. And then we press enter. Let me do a go mod tidy maybe. You know what I mean? Tidy things up. Once that is done, we have basically installed uh, Prometheus uh, Golang client, right? So what Prometheus will do basically is um, you need to expose a handler, an HTTP handler, and it will um, automatically, automatically already uh, gather a lot of metrics for you, right? And I will show you. So what you're gonna do here, this guy can be gone. Um, we're gonna say, let me let me show you. We're gonna say HTTP listen and surf. Actually, I'm not, not quite sure how we're gonna do this. Uh, we're gonna say, we, we, we pick a port. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna pick 222. And there is a reason for it. Um, but you can pick any port, you know what I mean? Um, listen and surf, I think, do we need this prom handler here? Prom HTTP handler. Is that is that the play here? Not quite sure. I think it is. Um, okay, this is gonna block our whole application. Hey, I'm aware, no worries, but I'm gonna show you. Go run. That's not true. We're gonna do this. No. This one? Yes. Um, God damn it. Do we need to do we need to install this bullshit? All right, you need to install it apparently, right? Just uh, do what he do do what he tells you. Okay, so basically now the program I'm gonna try this. Uh, let me try to local host without leaking nudes. Uh, two 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 metrics. All right, look at this beautiful. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger for the blind homies. You see, so this is basically an exposed uh, two 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 port uh, slash metrics. And that's coming from Prometheus itself, right? That's all these metrics is what you have out of the blue, right? And today we're gonna cover Prometheus itself, but in the full-time GoDev program, I'm covering also Grafana, right? Because Grafana will basically pull these things uh, from Prometheus and make a very, very nice dashboard. Although you could have already some kind of a dashboard, I'm gonna show you later on, because um, later on, but yeah, this is basically, you could see, uh, you have, for example, the go routines and all that shenanigans and, and the, the duration of the go garbage collector and you have a lot of stuff, guys. It's insane, right? So we're gonna put that aside. Okay, cool. <clears throat> the problem is that, of course, this thingy is blocking our application, right? So we're gonna put this in a go routine, go funk, hop, hop, and call it a day. You know what I mean? That's what we're gonna do. So this guy will basically be scheduled in another go routine and all good. Okay, that's fine. Uh, the next thing what we could do here is, uh, for example, we could say, uh, let's first install Prometheus, right? Let's first get that, get that thing done. So I'm gonna quit this thing, go back to CD, CD into prom, Prometheus, look at this. This is basically the Prometheus repository you just go to github.com slash, I don't know, Prometheus or something, and you basically clone the project. And I think you need to do make build or make install. It doesn't really matter. You guys are smart enough to figure out how to install that thing, right? Um, <laughs> this Windows song really is insane. But what I have here is a CD prom. And this is basically a folder. Can you guys actually see this? You can't. Uh, seems like terminal is missing more space fonts. Yeah, maybe. I have these this, this shenanigans here. The most important thing uh, you need to remember is basically this Prometheus YAML file, right? Let's uh, vim into this thing, Prometheus YAML, boom. So you need to have this configuration. It's all on the internet, but I'm gonna cover it a little bit. You're basically gonna say scrape interval, scrape timeout, evaluation interval, all that stuff, right? The amount of seconds it takes before it's gonna scrape for new metrics because what Prometheus, if you're gonna boot up the Prometheus client itself, the daemon basically, what it will do is it will scrape your 222 slash metrics endpoint, right? For these metrics, okay? Um, the metrics path metrics, that's uh, default, I guess. And then we're gonna have uh, targets. This is important, right? You see this guy here, these targets? 
localhost 2222. That's basically uh, our handler we just created in our project. I'm here for a Windows sound. Yeah, can I do this? Can I, can I force this sound? How do I force this sound? I can't, cannot force the sound, I'm so sorry. Um, I basically was also uh, setting up my, uh, my Linux Ubuntu system on my uh, new PC, but the problem is uh, recording is slow for some reason. I don't know what it is. I need to figure it out. It's, it's Linux and it's drivers. It's <laughs> All right. Uh, that's what you need, right? And then I have this uh, run script. Look at this. This is not a run script. This is not a run script. This is a run script. It's basically a Docker run. I'm going to run this in a Docker container. Uh, is that what I'm going to do? Is that the play? No, well, I'm actually, uh, well, we are using a Docker container. You know what I mean? So you don't need to install Prometheus. You can just do this, copy this line and you're good. Uh, and it will be in the Hollywood repository so you can find it there. So basically we're gonna do this thing. And I, I don't think this is correct, to be honest. I don't think it's gonna work, if I remember, because I was trying this a couple days ago for something else. And the problem was that, let me open up it again, uh, because I'm using this borked WSL, Prometheus cannot uh, connect to this 222 port. Shit. Um, I think I did something like um, dot dot slash Prometheus. There is your window sound. Uh, Prometheus, there is your window sound once again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, and then min min dash dash, by the way. Um, I think it's config.file. This, this is so fucking wrong. How, how, can somebody know how, how can I turn this bell off? I think it's this one. And I press enter. It's that easy. It's that easy. But now we have a problem. Let me open up another terminal because I'm not a Tmux guy. I missed that boat. I missed that fucking boat, not gonna lie. Um, let me quickly do something on the other screen here, guys. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> you can see what, what I'm doing, right? <laughs> Prometheus. Let me uh, quickly figure this out. Uh, I'm gonna be min min config dot file um, is going to be the same thing we did before, right? What's going on here? Let me open up. Um, did I make a mistake here? Prometheus? No, 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 this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is the play. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, cool. So now it's running. My bad for this uh, little um, inconvenience here. And if people are a Linux specialists, let me know because I I have the biggest the biggest uh, stack, um, but it, it's just slow. I don't know what it is. Um, all right. So once you started Prometheus, what you could do is uh, you can go. What's going on here? Let me move this. It's so annoying in streaming. You always need to be careful with all your windows, right? So we need to go to a local host. I will show you directly, guys. No worries. Um, that's going to be 9090. You see, you go to 9090 here. And now you have the Prometheus dashboard, right? It's so annoying. What's going on with my screen? Is this? Seems like it's transparent or something. What's going on? Okay. It's so annoying. It's 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 transparent for some reason on my screen. Anyway, um, what's slow about it? It just I'm I'm gonna I'm, I will explain later on. Uh, okay, cool. So basically, right now we can actually search some stuff. You could basically he is gonna give you a lot of these. Um, Metrics, for example, go maps at uh, mcache says bytes, click, and it's basically execute, and it's going to give you a result is zero. Well, for some reason, I don't know. Wait, let me quickly check here status targets. 
of course it cannot find metrics that's what i'm thinking so what we need to do here is um cd back to youtube here uh, hollywood by the way Wood. and um go run examples metrics main.go boom of course right and now we're gonna wait for 15 seconds and then it's gonna pick up this um oh, i'm a fucking I'm a, I'm a complete idiot um I'm a complete idiot because the problem is our application will exit here, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this. Boom. Delete the sleep. The go funk is for later on. Right? That's that. It's fine. Let's run this bad boy. Boom. Boom. Okay, cool. Now we are good, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so let's refresh a little bit. And this guy is basically gonna pick up our end service. And guys, let me know. Do you guys see transparent on my uh, camera? Can you see some transparent stuff? I'm not quite sure what's going on. Uh, yeah, okay, you see, now localhost is up, right? So basically Prometheus has found our uh, applications handler and it's pulling metrics from it. So right now we could go um, alerts graph and then we're gonna check for some example. Uh, go maps at malox, for example, I don't know, boom. It's going to be here, 591, something like that, right? And can you imagine you have a beautiful um, you can have a graph like this. Problem is one hour is bad. So you make it one minute and you have a nice, beautiful graph, right? But what if we could post or push our own metrics, right? That's hey, that's the play. Um, yes, transparent. Why is this thing? What's going on here? Let me quickly check here. Properties, um, custom. Oh wait, I know what it is. It's the fucking gamma probably from my fucking filter. Uh, display capture. Wait. Razor. Let me quickly do on the fly, guys. This is technical technical debugging on the fly. Wait. Filters OBS man. Color color correction. You see? Hey, we fixed it. I think it's better. It's fine. All right, now we fixed it, right? Okay. Custom metrics, let's do that. Back in Vim, um, let's kill this guy here. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we have this Prometheus uh, structure here. So we could do something like, um, for example, message count. It's going to be, I think it's a Prometheus counter. It's gonna be an interface, so it's no pointer. Uh, we're also gonna have something like um, latency. Latency, and that's going to be a Prometheus histogram. Prometheus histogram, just like that. Of course, now we need to have this uh, beautiful constructor. New prom matrix returning a prom matrix pointer. Dog is barking. New prom metrics here. Um, let's return prom metrics, the pointer, by the way. Prom metrics like that. And we're gonna say, for example, the message counter is going to be, and I'm gonna be very lazy, we're gonna say prom auto dot um, new counter. <clears throat> and I think this needs um, Prometheus counter options, I think, counter ops. And I think it's going to have a message or a, a help. Yeah. Counter of the messages the actor received. Tss. Tss. I don't know. Um, we also need something else here. Uh, I think it's going to be the name. Yeah, baby, it's the name. And the name needs to be something like that. For example, actor underscore message underscore counter, something like that. There's a problem here because uh, let's say we have multiple actors with different names, then they're gonna have the same name here, right? So that's gonna be problematic. We're gonna fix that very soon. Um, return prom metrics. So let's start with the counter. So we're going to say the message counter is going to be the message counter. It's easy as that, right? 
uh, that's that so now we're gonna have a problem here because this boy here is going to be what's going on man messages all over the place uh, this is going to be a new pro matrix and you could construct with other values i don't know you could construct your matrix somewhere else it doesn't really matter right it's just for sake of an idea here um I think we're good, by the way. No, we're not good, because... I think we're good. No, we don't. This with hooks, you can delete this thing. Oh, fine. And then, here, 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 here. Each time we're gonna have a message, right? Here, this thing is basically, each time it, it intercepts a message, so what we're gonna do here is p.messageCounter.ink. Dot dot, uh, just like that, you see? And that's why we basically attach the function receiver to Prometrix, which seems a method, but it's actually a function because it's syntactic sugar, but it's an endless discussion. We're not going to do, right? Uh, and if you want to see in depth of these metrics, how you, this is for actors, but we also, I'm, I'm also covering this for your normal microservices. It's in the full-time Godev, 30% off, check it out. Today's main sponsor, by the way. Um, this, we're gonna delete that stuff here. Actually, to be honest, we can't, right? Um, it's for later. Message counter. Okay, cool. So what's going to happen is, what we're going to do here, uh, we're going to make an... Uh, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a go funk here for this boy. <clears throat> Just like that. And then we're going to say a new actor. It's fine. Prometrics perfectly fine and then we're gonna loop here how long forever we're gonna time sleep time second and we're gonna say uh, engine sent me to this bit message data let's make a y it's gonna be zero uh, we're going to send data. It's going to be FMT S printf S by the way S printf by the way uh, And that's going to be Message to foo Percentage D Y Y plus plus Actually to be honest Okay Unreachable code. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so basically what's going to happen is it's going to send messages every second and we're going to pick that up into our Prometheus shenanigans, right? So let's start this thing and see if it's going to work. Um, all right, so basically it's it's printing out that it's receiving messages, but we are going to check that here in our beautiful thing. So let's, let's go to targets real quick. Okay, metrics is up. Let's refresh for the for certainty, right? All good. Up, green, green things. Perfectly fine. Uh, we go back to graph and then we are gonna say how do we call that actor message counter here boom execute bam and you see we have 19 19 messages graph one hour is too much let's delete that a little bit you see it's basically going up and up and up and up that's how you actually add custom metrics in Prometheus, and this is basically for the actor model, but you can already see it works in Golang for every single thing, right? It's, you just need to know how to weave it in. You know what I mean? Weave things in. Uh, we're gonna do a last metric before I'm gonna answer some questions. And that is the latency, right? Latency, very important. We wanna measure if I'm receiving messages, how long does it took to process these boys? So, we're gonna call this this histogram. We already did this, so we're gonna say uh, MSG latency. Oh, fine. MSG latency is going to be a prom auto. If you don't use prom auto, you need to register it manually. But hey, if it's an auto, it's an auto. Prometheus um, histogram options. Yeah, it's the same thing, right? A name, and the name is going to be um, actor message latency copy this once again because we're going to do the help and we're just going to leave it like that but without these things right boom boom 
Okay, we also need buckets here, um, and that's another topic. Just need buckets, which is a slide, a slice. Um, it's basically for your. I have no clue. Don't tell anyone. You just need buckets, guys, and we make zero, zero point one. One. You can make as much bucket as you want. <laughs> Uh, it's needed for your um, histogram, right? Guys, come on, if you didn't know that, it's for your histogram, right? And then we're gonna say uh, MSG latency here, and it's going to be the MSG latency, right? And you could see you can mix as much metrics as you want, right? Um, there is no, sky's the limit, sky's the limit. How do we do that? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is time start. We're gonna say start here at the beginning. We're gonna say time now. And then here we're gonna say um, latency. Is going to be time since start seconds. If you want it in milliseconds, you want it in milliseconds. You want it in nanoseconds, you can do it in nanoseconds. It doesn't really matter. To be honest, in seconds, that's. MS. And then we're going to say P, M latency, observe. MS. Cannot use variable type N64 as flow 64. <laughs> Cannot use MS variable of type N64. Is that true? Fuck you, we take seconds. That's what we're gonna do. For some reason, seconds is returning us a float, uh, but that's fine, right? And then uh, we're basically just gonna boot this thing up uh, like this. And then we're going back to our uh, beautiful thingy here. We're gonna see if we can find, for example, actors. Uh, we maybe need to wait a little bit. It's up, that's fine. We need to understand that sometimes if you boot it up directly, it it, 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 it did not scrape it already, if that makes sense. Okay, and then you have these things, right? You have actor, MSG, latency bucket, latency count, and latency sum. There is not really much you can do with it. It's more for Grafana that can basically um, use these things to make a new, uh, a beautifully um, chart, histogram. Whatever you want to call it, but you could say latency sum or count or something is going to be the same. Against 36, it's going to be the same as messages. You could also do something like. Um, what's the sum? Nobody knows. I don't know what I mean. Take it in a graph, make it a little bit mo smaller. Show that to your colleagues. <laughs> and you're a god. You know what I mean? And you have no clue what's going on, but it doesn't need to be because it's graphics. You know what I mean? Graphics. Wow, oh, nice. Look at this. It's an uptrend, you know? All right, that's basically it for uh, very simple, right? Because I'm gonna make a video out of this. Uh, it's basically uh, a very simple approach to add Prometheus metrics, basically set up Prometheus, add a metrics to your system. And in our case with the actor model, uh, the only thing we need to do is basically um, just do actor with middleware for every single actor we have. And uh, it will basically track, track the middleware. It will basically track all the metrics that we uh, defined for that particular actor. Uh, well, this particular metrics handler, if you know what I mean. If you wanna know more about instrumentation and logging and, and how to manage all of that for microservices, that's what we're gonna cover in the full-time Go Dev. All right, I'm gonna check some uh, massages real quick. What's going on here? 10,000 messages. Um, it's all fine. Where can I get the timing for the live streams? Uh, Deepan, that's uh, a problem because I'm the most unorganized person and I'm not always sure when I'm gonna stream because you need to understand that I'm also single-handedly raised two kids, right? Two kids and um, it depends, right? Sometimes my son needs to go to the soccer, to the football thing. Um, it's, it's annoying, but I'm gonna make a schedule and I think it's going to be Tuesday and Friday, Saturday or something. You know what I mean? Two times in a week, right? What do you think? 
Can you use Delph for in-process debugging? Yes. Um, do you got any profile tools other than GoPro for Golang Runtime? Prometheus is good for telemetry. However, I want to which use debug on local machine. Um, I'm always using uh, GoPprof, yeah, the built-in stuff. What do I need to get access to the full-time GoDev GitHub? Uh, you just need to send me a message with your GitHub username and the, and the message uh, which you were purchased, purse, uh, bought the course from, right? The name, so I can actually verify that it's you. And then I adding you to the, to the repository, right? And also to the uh, Discord, private Discord, right? For your questions, you can directly talk to me. <clears throat> okay. What programming languages do you know? Guest gamer, legit every single programming language. And I'm gonna do more other programming languages on the stream for sure, right? For example, Odin language, Rust. We're gonna do some Rust because it's hype. I need to do the YouTube game. So I will show everybody how it's done. You know what I mean? Doing some, some cool stuff in Rust. Um... What is Prometheus? It's, um, if you watched, you will already know what it is. Can we use zinc to prevent rust? What is that? No clue what that means. Okay, cool. Uh, if there are more questions, let me know. Happy to answer and basically stick to the end of the stream because we're going to do some reaction video once again. Right? I need to jump up that hype train. Uh, some problems that we have here is basically that if we have multiple actors, right, this name, right, this actor name here, which is basically um, this thing, will always be the same. So there is no way for us to give us a nice graph of different actors with these things, right? So it's actually an easy fix, right? So what we could do is basically... Um, we could do a new prometrics here, and we could say, for example, uh, name or prefix, right? It's gonna be a string. And then we're gonna say, um, for example, fmt as printf. Um, that's gonna be percentage s underscore. We could keep actor, why not? Message counter, that's fine. And then we're gonna say here, prefix. Let's do the same thing with this guy. But we're gonna call this uh, actor MSG latency. Um, that's fine. That should actually work, right? So now we are going to the bottom. I'm gonna call this foo. Just like that. New pro matrix, foo. Is there actually a way in the context so we can, um, what do we have in context here? C, receiver. Let me open up the context real quick. We have a receiver, oh, it's an interface, that's annoying. We have a pit. Hey, we have a pit. We have a process ID, that's actually insane. Examples, let's go back to metrics. We have a process ID here. So we could do something like, um, instead of doing this prefix, we could do pit is going to be, we can't, it's gonna be shit, we can't because, yeah. We can't, right, because uh, the context is here. The context is here. Uh, may I ask what editor you are using? It's uh, Neo, it's Vim, it's Neo Vim. It's Neo Vim, but it's, uh, yeah, it's Neo Vim. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm thinking here, guys, because what I wanna do, doing this, like this foo thingy, is fine, but I wanna actually wanna pit. For example, if we do this in a remote, uh, in a, on a remote thingy, we could, for example, could be, I don't know, uh, uh, some IP, IP that n never existed, right? And it's gonna be foo, something like that. 
so we know which IP this actor is running, you know what I mean? Um, let me think. We could, I'm not quite sure if this is the best approach, but we could do something like this. Um, this is the pit, right? And the pit is going to be C pit. That's our pit, right? That's our process ID, our process ID. And we could do, for example, P pit. But that's so nasty, right? It's pit. It's so, it's, it, Anyway, there are some, some things, uh, I don't really like it, for now it's going to be this uh, as an example, right? <clears throat> you could give the pet here, the pet is here to be honest, that's even more nastier. We can, we can, use, we can use a decorated pattern, it's something I, I'm using all the time, it's something I'm teaching in every single video, uh, almost. Um... We could force this, right? We could say... We can't. This is getting called... And I'm also... Can we change that? That seems like very bad, but it is what it is, right? It can. You see, it can. Counter is an interface, probably. Yeah, it's an interface. We fucked. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's it will be full like that. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, okay. Let 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 us test this real quick, right? So let's clear the screen. Let's go to back to. Uh, let's boot this thing up. Let's see. Let's refresh. Um, status, let's see if it's up. Targets, it's all fine here. Graphs, do we have foo? Yes, now we have foo actor mes uh, message counter, we have foo actor latency bucket, you see? We have all foo. So let's actually, guys, let's make another actor. Real quick, it's very simple. Where is foo? It's fucking mouse thingy. Foo is here, no problem. Who is there? We're gonna make this uh, bar. Bar. New bar. Bar. And now we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna spawn another pit. This is gonna be foo, foo pit. Bar pit. Uh, new bar. Bar. New matrix. Foo matrix, bar matrix, <laughs> yeah. Uh, foo, bar. To be honest, it's fine. Um, what are we doing here? Sending to a pit does not exist. It's going to be foo pit. Let's also send to bar, right? Bar pit. Message to foo. Message to bar. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Look at this. Refresh. Uh, bar. We need to wait a sec. Bar. No, it's not there. Let's let's check. Status, targets, yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Graphs, bar. Okay, now we have bar actor message counter, execute. 13 messages to bar. We could also do the foo thingy. Foo, boom. 30 messages to foo, of course, because they get the same messages, you know what I mean? Uh, and if we do it again, execute. Damn. That's bad. Execute, boom. 28 messages. You see what I'm, you see what I'm going? And let's make it fancy, of course, with this graph. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. Beautiful. All right, 
Um, do you have any sneak peek video into a topic in your Go course? I'm from a Python background. I'm looking to learn Go. A matter of fact, um, I don't. I think the first video of the JSON Hotel API series has a sneak peek, uh, but all the others not. Um, but I am planning to pick some video, an interesting video from the course and put it on YouTube as a promotion thing. So you guys can actually, instead of all these, go to my course guys, please buy my course, it's the best. I'm basically willing to just dump one episode from something, something interesting, so you guys can see how does it feel? How does it feel to be a full-time Godev in SPE, right? In progress, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Let me see. You could always pass the metric value as a JSON structure. Prometheus and Grafana. Yeah, that's true. It's so weird without any music. It's weird. Uh, it's so weird without any musica. Uh, but it is what it is, right? Uh, would be a good language to make a game engine with. No, 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 no. Go would, would be the worst language to make a game engine with, right? In game engine, you need to have no garbage collection. You know what I mean? Because you're doing a lot of data manipulation. Um, you're working a lot with big data and native call. Yeah, GPU interactions, all that stuff. Uh, big vertices, big buffers of vertices of vertices of buffers of vertices of vertices. You know what I mean? Go is not good. Of course, you can make a game in every single language and, and most of the games will be fine, right? But if you want to make um, if you want to make it a big game, a big 3D game or something, uh, Go is not recommended, right? It's not recommended. But by the end of the day, it doesn't really matter, right? Because if you check Minecraft, it's been written in Java uh, back in the days, right? And hey, billions of money <laughs> in the pocket. You know what I mean? And this guy is now <laughs> vamos a la playa. You know what I mean? Sepe margaritas with some beautiful chicks. Um, so yeah, but I would recommend if you want to play, if you want to make a game, it's going to be more something like C plus plus, your Rust, with the Bevy engine or something. I don't know, um, or Odin, the Odin language, or maybe uh, how does it Zig or something? These new uh, system language J from Jonathan Blow, the J language. I'm looking forward to that. If somebody can bring me into the uh, into the beta program, I'm happy to make content of that language. Looking forward to that for uh, looking for that language already maybe four or five years. Yeah. Um, garbage collection pauses and game dev stuff is anti -bad. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Garbage collection will pause at a certain point. You could in Golang you can do a lot of things to optimize that, right? You could use buffer pools and everything, but by the end of the day, uh, at a certain point of time, you're going to reach the limits and the garbage collector will need to collect garbage, right? You know what I mean? There is, you cannot say, yo, you don't need to uh, collect this garbage because I'm going to reuse that later on. So it's fine to keep that allocated, although I'm not using it anymore. Just leave it alone. We cannot do that in Go, right? At a certain point of time, it's going to collect, you know, and uh, that's bad. It's basically you're aiming and then it's suddenly you want to, you know what I mean? Bam, missed the headshot, you know? Uh, but for a League of Legends, it doesn't really matter because with garbage collector or without garbage collector, you're going to feed anyways, right? So it doesn't really matter. Oh, right. Um, what I'm going to do is actually, to be honest, uh, this was a very, very uh, quick thing here. I'm going to see. What do I need to do to make this a little bit uh, cleaner so I can commit this example? And then we're going to do a reaction video, right? going to be some kind of a short stream. Well, one hour and a half maybe, um, which is fine, right? So I'm going to see this prom matrix is fine. Two, two, two counters for now. That's good. Uh, this is his message. It's also fine. Receive. We don't need this full started, right? It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's fine. 
boot up this handler at 222. Could actually make it better, right? You could say, um, prom endpoint flag string. Um, oh, I'm gonna say that. How are we gonna call this? How are we gonna name it? Prom HTTP. Fuck it. Port. Prom port. Prom HTTP. Fuck it. It's going to be this prom HTTP um, default two 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 because I don't know. Caps lock. We're gonna call this the listen address. Uh, of the Prometheus oh, uh, HTTP handler, something like that. Of course, we need to close these brackets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Double quotes, by the way. Uh, prom handler undefined. God damn it, this is conflicting. Prom, listen, adder. Fuck it. To be honest, Listen, add it. All at each other. That's perfectly fine. And then we're going to say flag parse, of course. Uh, flag parse all these, these beautiful things. And then we're going to say this is going to be the dereferenced prom listen adder. <whistles> Call it a day. Actor new engine, foo metrics. Uh, we could do a var here to make it clean. This, 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 and this. Hop. This Y is actually uh, useless because um, it doesn't really matter. We're going to send the same message over and over again. Uh, this can be deleted. This message, um, we don't need this. Delete. 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 We're going to do this. Um, y is zero. Y is smaller than... Then y plus plus, and then we're going to um, sleep for a second. That's perfectly fine. Call it a day. Look at this beautiful thing. Let's test this again. Uh, yep, why not? I'll run this example. I should do 10 loops, and then it's working out. Yeah, 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 yeah. 40 viewers. Welcome, everyone. Bienvenue, merhaba. Buongiorno, goeiedag. Guten dag. Every single language, man. In every single fucking language on the planet, I'm greeting here, everybody, man. What is that? All right, so uh, let's try to do this actually again and see if our uh, things are working. And I'm going to commit this uh, thing and I'm going to do this reaction vit. Vit. Uh, we need to be fucking fast because we have only 10 seconds. Execute. Yeah, it is. We have one. Here, you see. Elf. Elf messages. Perfectly fine. All working fine. Get at the whole shebang. Get commit. Uh, min hm. And we're going to say added Prometheus metrics <laughs> middleware. Example, that's it, get, push, origin, making a pull request by the way, prom, oh. easy, clear, and you're done, you know what I mean? Vamos a la playa. Of course, we need to double check that on um, GitHub. GitHub. Look at this beautiful sharpshooter. Hollywood, uh, click this. Prom had a recent push last than a minute ago. Compare and pull request. Compare and pull request. Thank you very much. <sighs> Added Prometheus metrics middleware example. Looking good to me. No, you can't do that. You need to wait for that, right? Uh, we do this. 
Wait, actually, to be honest, we did a big mistake. Before you do a pull request, before you're gonna push your shit, you need to do a make test. And that's gonna be problematic. Because there's a race condition sometimes. So it's basically a gambling, it's a slot machine. It's a slot machine. Like the build, the build system, the, 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 the continuous integration build system of Hollywood is a slot machine. Sometimes it's green, sometimes it's red. Right? And that's nice because if it's a slot machine, you can basically gamble with your colleagues all the time. Is the build going to work? Yes or no. And you're going to make a lot of money with these, with these bets. Um, what I'm also going to do is if I open up this make file real quick is I'm going to build. Um, the matrix example. Examples. Matrix. May not go. I don't, I don't need to get that. I don't need to get that here, but um, it's it's what I, it's it's a uh, muscle memory. Get commit uh, updated make file. Origin, origin prop. Boom. That's how you do git, guys. You know what I mean? Stop with UIs and all that stuff. That's all unnecessary bullshit. Um, yeah, let's me first get this pull request. Yeah. Update make file. <gasps> you see? Lost the gamble. But it's fine because now we have a second chance and it's updated make file need. <clears throat> What's going on here? Pull request. Who is who is Oh yeah, I see these things. I need to do some maintainer stuff. I know. I know. Um you're either gonna build a program or build your weld. Where the unit test, kappa cool. Guys, where's the unit test? Let me, hey. You guys still need to learn a lot of stuff. Visual, stop. Am I, am I, am I? I will show you. Um, actors, where do we start? Uh, let's start with the engine tests. Look at this. Tests, tests, all over the tests. Tests, 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 benchmarks. Uh, context test, everything is tested, you know what I mean? Context test, boom. Whoosh, test here, and then also remote test. Whoosh. Of course, it's not only 10 lines of tests, it's because it's, you know what I mean? Relative numbers, you know? Uh, there are tests everywhere, boys. No worries. We g it's covered. It's all covered. If you want to run all executables at once after building multiple microservices. Uh, yeah. Which language is the quickest to learn? Chinese. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it depends, it depends. I don't think there is a way, of course, like for example, C++ and all that stuff and Rust, they're all uh, difficult to learn, right? Don't start with these things, please. Don't, don't do it, right? No, no matter what YouTube is telling you, no matter what influencer is pulling his, 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 his pants off and he's taking his dick out of his pants. No, don't do it. Uh, no. Start simple. Python, Ruby, PHP, JavaScript. These, these languages give you a good base and then you can then you can use your patterns you learned the way of thinking you can you can do that for other syntaxes um what are we doing here yes this pull request i'm gonna do this reaction video real quick i had prometheus metrics middleware example is it still building what is going on <gasps> What's going on here? Um, like I said, it's, it's something is wrong with, um, there is one specific case that sometimes fails and it's sometimes, you know, it works on my machine. That's the only thing that matters. Uh, yeah, uh, uh. <gasps> hey! 
Een volk. Wat is er gebeurd? Itching my bald head. Man, I see ghosts. Casper. You know Casper? A little ghost? Wait, where is the stack trace, to be honest? Um, host the tool, cash cool. I have no clue what's going on. Finally processed, yeah, that's fine. Oh yeah, context uh, deadline exceeded error. That's not an error. <laughs> no, it's... Um, that's what I always do against clients. It's like, hey, it's fine. It's because, you know, sometimes it happens, you know, look at my... Come, look at my screen. Let me make test here. You see, it works perfectly fine. I'm building all these things and... Uh, yeah, sometimes it hangs a little bit, but you see it works perfectly fine. So no worries about that. So what we're going to do, basically, we're going to, we're going to rerun and we're going to rerun until it works and nobody, it's all fine. That's how it works. In the, that, that's how it really, really works in, um, in any company, by the way, right? Where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> Who is this? A, are you a paid actor or something? Um, tattoo reveal. It's it's a mistake from when I was younger. Uh, where do I see myself in five years? I see myself in five years with uh, a silver plate button, of course, silver play button on YouTube. Um, but I don't think that far. You know what I mean? I, I have some visuals in my head. Right? I have some. I'm a, I'm, I'm a visualizer. I, I visualize everything in my, in my, in this thing here in the chamber, in the, the, the chamber of the Pharaoh. By the way, there are no mummies being found in any pyramids on earth. Just saying this, right? It's a little bit of off topic, but there are no mummies found as of today. Not a single mummy was found in a pyramid. Huh? Think about that. You know what I mean? So if they can lie to you about that for all your life in every single school, Right? I need to re rebring, reprogram my children every single fucking day. Because the educational system, the media, is brainwashing everybody. Right? So how do I see myself in five years? No clue. Um, I don't know. I'm just going, right? I'm just going at the speed of light and I will uh, I will see where I end. But I want to have some some cool stuff, you know. I want to have a big bank account. <laughs> Who not? Who doesn't? Um, <laughs> where do you see yourself, Eid? Digital Sparky, five years older. Yes, also true. Um, what, what's going on here? Let me see. What are we doing with this build? Uh, pull requests. God damn it, something is... That's bad. I will fix that later on. It doesn't really matter, right? I will fix that later on. You know what I mean? This pull request can sit there for a couple of times. And then we're going to fix it. Um, there is something with co context deadline exceeded, by the way. If you want to know what, what it is, I know what it is. It's um, it's a problem in here. Um, it's a GGQ. And for this thing, because I'm using an OS thread lock somewhere. Wait, where is it? It's very interesting, by the way. Um, it's an inbox. I'm doing these, these shenanigans, this thing, and sometimes um, in a test, sometimes it doesn't get set or something, I don't know what it is, and uh, basically the whole shebang locks, and the context get exceeded. Why? Because if you do a lock OS thread, it's going to be faster, but the problem is if you use channels at the same time, you're gonna go into big problems because if you lock your OS thread, there's only one thread. So if it needs to schedule another uh, your channel in a go routine and it needs to read and all that stuff, it can't because 
it's going to be much slower because it cannot schedule it on another thread if your thread is being um, if your thread is being consumed all the time in this case because this is a queue so it's going to send messages all the time so there is no space to schedule something else there is no blocking IO so what's going to happen uh, this context here it's going to be a response here this response here you see this channel is going to um, have a timeout this one this timeout here is going to get triggered here which will cause a context deadline exceeded that's what's going on and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't okay are there any questions are we going to do a reaction video um yeah a reaction It's a very, it's, I don't know, it's a good video, guys. I'm just picking these videos randomly, man. Uh, you will see. It's, it's. Because I, I, I was pitchforked. I was basically pitchforked uh, the previous stream with the reaction video that my video was an AI generated video. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, you're right. I didn't realize that at the moment that you were watching for it. Ay, 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 I remember that. Um, rookie mistakes, but hey, mistakes are being made. It is what it is, right? So what video are we going to watch? We're going to watch a video from a very famous YouTuber. And it's not for a... I don't think it's an entertainment YouTuber, right? I don't think he's, he's giving you um, a deep educational stuff. And it's going to be... Wait, first of all, I need to check my volume. Uh, you guys need to help me, by the way. You guys need to help me. Yes. It's this beautiful video, how to learn how to program. And um, I came across a video of Fireship. I didn't actually, to be honest, I did not know who Fireship was, um, but apparently is a very famous guy. And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly play this video. I'm gonna quickly play this. Actually, to be honest, I don't need to be full screen right now. I'm gonna play this video, and you guys need to tell me if the sound is okay. That's very important, right? Because I don't have the finger pitching feeling. Um, to, to get the sound right. So I'm going to play this real quick. Everybody needs to learn to code. Coding is the new literacy. If you can't code, you'll soon become obsolete. Plus, coding is easy, so you really have no excuse. These are all statements that are not true, but I've been told that fear-based sales tactics will... Okay, what, 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 about, what about the sound? Let me know. I need to know that before we actually... Because I'm going to record this, right, for YouTube, so... Saw this video before. Yeah, 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 I think I think it's nice. I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use it because too loud. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, we do it again. We do it again. Everybody needs to learn to code. Coding is the new literacy. If you can't code, you'll soon become obsolete. Plus, coding is easy, so you really have no excuse. These are all statements that are not true, but I've been told that fear-based sales tactics will scare you into subscribing to my YouTube channel. In today's The sound quality is not great. How is that possible? Is it still too loud? It's better, but it's, is it is it better? Is it worse? Is it okay? That's great. Yeah, of course the quality will be bad. It was basically uh, uh, over the limit. You know what I mean? It's 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 it's. it's uh, I'm gonna do it one more time, right? We're gonna do it one more time, and uh, it needs to be perfect, right? Everybody needs to learn to code. Coding is the new literacy. If you can't code, you'll soon become obsolete. Plus, I'm gonna wait two two more minutes. Sound quality is good now that the volume is better. Yeah, of course, I, I know. It was basically uh, clipping. It was clipping the sound. So I, I think I basically uh, broke um, a couple people's ears. But it is what it is sometimes. I'm so bad. You can send the invoice for your damage repairs. Perfect. I don't know whether the video is good or not. I just watched the first two minutes or one minute. I don't know, but I think it's interesting because uh, it's a very important aspect how to how how to learn how to code, right? And then there's eight hard truths. And like I said, I'm the master of simplification. I won the Nobel Prize of simplification. 
and um, I'm a self-taught engineer. Don't get this mistaken, right? I'm, I'm, I have no degree, no, that I, and legit none. You know what I mean? I did a lot of jobs, and then I, yeah, yeah, it is what it is. Um, I'm actually, yeah, I can so, say so many things because there is an article about me that states that I am that I have a degree in computer science. But I haven't. You can backtrack me. I don't care. It is what it is. I don't lie. My hips don't lie tonight. All right, so we're going to do this. Are you ready, guys? We're going to do this. We're going to check it. I don't know. I don't know. Fireship. Um, two million subscribers. And we're going to give him a couple more. You know what I mean? Actually, he should basically do reactions on me. Right? But it is what it is. I'm a small small YouTuber. And I need to basically suck everybody, everybody else's dick. You know what I mean? All right. So let's do this. Full screen. Uh, I'm going to interrupt and uh, hopefully his, this video is bad so we can bash it. And if it's good, it's good. You know what I mean? Then we all learned something about it. Um, get superpowers to code. Yeah. Everybody needs to learn to code. Coding is the new literacy. If you can't code, you'll soon become obsolete. Plus, coding is easy, so you really have no excuse. These are all statements that are not true, but I've been told that fear-based sales tactics will scare you into subscribing to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to share a variety of practical techniques that have helped me learn to code, because learning in and of itself is a skill. And if you want to be a software engineer, you'll need to learn new things all the time. Many moons ago, I didn't know how to code. I wanted to learn because I hated my low-paying, miserable job and wanted to build some kind of app on the internet that would would allow me to break out and start my own business. I figured I wasn't smart enough to. That's what you need to do to get 2 million subscribers. You know what I mean? The, the way he made his videos, it's, it's, I don't know, man. I don't have time for that stuff. You know what I mean? It's like these, these videos are so, uh, boom, snap, 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 snap. You know what I mean? It's fast. The attention span of the YouTube is basically zero. You know what I mean? It's, it's my goldfish remembers more. It's, I don't want to be that like that. Right? Of course, I need to play more the YouTube game. But this is like entertainment, right? This is, but yeah, well, it does whatever. But congrats. It's a video that I think a lot of people keep watching till the end, right? Because it's so fast paced. But anyway, I'm sorry for interrupting to code, but you only live once, so I bought a giant book about PHP and MySQL. And sure enough, I wasn't smart enough to code, and those toilets weren't going to clean themselves. I went back to my crappy job and forgot about it. Luckily, a little while later, my family needed a website, so I figured I was at least smart enough to learn HTML. And somehow, a few months later, I figured out how to ship my first website. The important thing to recognize when learning to code is that hard work is more valuable than talent. Talent is great if you have it, and there are 10x developers out there where things just click on a much higher level, but programming is a skill Something I actually missed. I missed the boat completely on this 10x. What, what does it actually mean? 10x developer. You know what I mean? It's like this 10x. Is that something like where you make a lot of money? Or, or you guys need to help me here because I see this, this, this buzzword a lot, 10x developer, and I have no clue what that is because uh, you, need, you guys need to educate me. I'm a boomer. I'm a boomer. I'm so sorry. You know what I mean? Feel very similar to playing a musical instrument or juggling. For most people, you totally suck at first, then you feel like a genius when you code your first program, then you realize you totally suck again, and this pattern goes on and on forever in an infinite loop. Learning is supposed to be painful. In fact, I believe that you need pain to grow. When learning a guitar, you need to put your fingertips through a lot of pain before you build calluses. In programming, you'll have to bang your head against the keyboard a bunch of times until you figure out how to make these error messages go away. So if you don't have talent, be prepared to embrace the hard work. Now as you learn, you might this is actually a good video. Well, I mean, the first statement this is actually good because I mentioned this a lot, right? And, and also, the, you remember this chat GPT video where I told you that you should not use it because you need to go through these pains. And I call it frustrations, right? These programming frustrations where you try to hack something together. You're copy-pasting from Stack Overflow. You're copy-pasting from a forum. You're copy-pasting from everywhere. You're copy-pasting from a tutorial. It doesn't work. You have no clue what is going on because you just copy paste it and you cannot code. And you're working on the on, on the most simple project for hours and hours and hours and debugging and nothing is working and it's spaghetti. And you know what I mean? You're sweating. You're basically at the point of quitting and just go back to your McDonald's job or go back to playing League, playing League of Legends. But suddenly you figured it out. And well, that moment is crucial. 
in my opinion, that's a crucial moment for learning. And if you keep using these GitHub Copilot chat GPT three, four, five things, you will never encounter these things because it will just throw at you some code, which is most of the time not really optimized. That's a discussion for later on, but very important. Very, very important. You need to uh, you need to fail to learn. That's the best way to learn. That's true. That's what you need to. You, like I said, you need to go out. People ask me, how do you do that? How do you do this? How do I make uh, a good GitHub uh, uh, profile? How how how? Where do I need to start? To fucking just start. You know what I mean? There is nothing. Keep it simple and build up. You know, it takes time. It takes fucking time. I'm 36 fucking years old. You know what I mean? I'm I'm already done. I'm almost done. You know. There's already is. is, is might be wondering which programming language should I start with. The truth is that it doesn't matter as long as you get really good at one of them. The thing about programming is that there's so much to learn, you are never going to retain it all. I used to be a really good Ruby programmer, but at the yeah, that's uh, this video actually a good video by the way because uh, the thing is it, it's true, right? Programmers so, uh, when I when I was young and I was 16 when I started to learn programming because we we're playing Counter Strike, right? That was my story. I was playing Counter Strike and we were making these client sites and we we're making these servers and all that stuff. Um, but in my day, there was no such a tech community, right? Right now, that's the problem. And I think it's, it's a handicap. It's the biggest disease that lives on the internet. And that's, and for, it's be, the biggest disease, it's, it's a blocker for people that are willing to learn how to code right now. And that's social media. Because when I started out, there was no such thing as YouTube was ish, was there ish, right? It was not as big as now. And you needed to figure out yourself. There was nobody that, that could tell you, you're bad, you need to use this, TDD, DDD, all that stuff. The, 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 didn't, these things didn't exist, you know? So you, you were always good. People were always cheering at you. They were always helping you, you know what I mean? Because there was nothing to gain. There was nothing to, to sell you at that time, right? There was nothing to... There was nobody to get attention from, viewers from. And it was PHP or it was JavaScript and there was no React. There was nothing. It was just jQuery and JavaScript, HTML, CSS was so easy. And you had Python and you had Ruby. But back in my day, that were, ooh, Ruby, that's special syntax. I'm going to stay away from that. You know what I mean? It's, I don't know what it is. I cannot even barely understand HTML. Let's, let's stand up and go to Ruby. So we, st we, we, we stick with the, the basic things. PHP, MySQL, CSS, HTML, these simple things. But right now, if you want to start to program, <laughs> where is this thing? This, this, this chart, where, I don't know where it is, but it, it's, it, people are everywhere. You're everywhere. You're doing everything wrong. You're not using the, the, the right stack. Your programming language is slow. Your programming language is bad. Nobody is using your programming language. There are no jobs in your programming language. You're not gonna get paid enough in your programming language. You're basically a fat loser. That's what they're telling you. I go to Reddit for some, uh, for some help. They're telling you you're a fat loser. Okay, I go to Stack Overflow to get some help. They're telling you you're a fat loser. You go to Twitter, they're telling you you're a fat loser. You know what I mean? It's sad, but it's true. It's sad, but it's true. The tech community is completely busted. Why? Because I am sitting here in front of YouTube making reaction videos. That's why. I don't want to do this, but I need to. You know what I mean? I'm getting forced to do this while I could basically spend these, five, these 10, 15 minutes extra to show you something in code. You know what I mean? To show you something valuable. To show you something that is the, the undisputed truth that could make you some money that could basically give you a, a raise in your paycheck or something. I don't know. You know what I mean? To learn you something you didn't know. But hey, here we are doing reaction videos. Thanks to the tech community. Thank you very much. At this point, I've forgotten almost everything about it. And that's no big deal because memorizing syntax doesn't really matter. The thing you really want to learn and retain are programming patterns. patterns. Essentially, everything you do in programming is patterns. problem solving. The idea is to create a repertoire of tools in your brain that you can then use to solve virtually any problem in any language. For example, if you need to loop over something, but you've never used Perl before, you still understand the trade-offs between a for loop, while loop, and recursion. This is the exact reason that when you go to a technical interview, they usually don't care which language you use. They just want to see that you know how to solve problems and in some cases
That's false. What he's telling is true, right? He's telling you need to know patterns and everything, and that's perfectly fine. Syntax doesn't matter. He is 100% true. But that he's telling us that for an interview, you don't need to know your language, that you don't need to know the syntax. That's bad because I see this on my Discord channel all the time. People are getting all these, these specific questions about, a, about JavaScript and what is a what is a const, who the fuck gives a shit? You know what I mean? Nobody cares. You need to fix a problem, right? But I think uh, uh, job interviewing is something that's also completely different. When I was, I, I, like, I cannot basically say this enough. When I was younger, <laughs> it was so much better because people didn't care about what you knew. They, they cared about your motivation, uh, your problem solving skills, your, your, um, your personality and your place inside of a team and not about how good do you know how to use unsafe pointer in goal line. You know what I mean? But hey. Cases, they may only have you write pseudocode on a whiteboard to analyze your problem solving skills. So in learning, I would recommend trying out a few different And by the languages. way, this is actually bad, right? By the way, I, I'm gonna give you a tip. If you ever, ever in your life, in a job interview, need to do live coding or do pseudocoding on a whiteboard, or do any live demonstration at all, go tell them to fuck themselves and find another company to work for. Because that's the baddest shit that can ever happen to you. Because an interview is already a very stressful experience, right? For everybody. And it, it, even for me, I'm, 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 I'm sitting on YouTube, I'm doing all these streams and all these videos. Even for me, it's, it's stressful. You know what I mean? And a developer, an engineer, that, that's what they forget, right? An engineer, it's very easy for these guys, right? It's like, oh, okay, oh we're going to ask him some, some, some hard questions. And it's just to laugh at you so they can basically uh, come on top over you to diss you, to show them, to show you that they are much better and that you are basically a complete nobody. That's what they want to do, right? All these lead devs, right? All these fucking nobodies, you know what I mean? Um, but don't do that ever because it's as a developer, you need to be in your creative element, right? You need to be in your element, your desk, your music, your zone, your coffee, you know what I mean? Everything you, your chair, everything needs to be relaxed, a leg pump, maybe a chest pump, maybe pumping up the traps, I don't know, or some biceps, you know what I mean? And then you're in your zone and you can fix everything you want. You have your own tools. Some, some people use ChatGPT3, fine. Some people go to Stack Overflow, fine. Some people use Google, all fine. Some people write it on a piece of paper. It's all fine, but that's, that's your technique. That's your way of doing things. But if you need to do it on a whiteboard in front of two people looking like you, like you're basically complete nude, you're gonna choke. You cannot think. And that's for me the same thing. Even on stream for me, it's hard to solve sometimes complex problems and I just try to do something quick, quick, quick because it's hard for me to think about that because I know people expect an answer very quickly and a good one and only knowing that inside of my head is, is already choking me out, right? So don't do that, never. And learn the one that feels most natural to you. For most people, I think Python is ideal because it has a minimal syntax, is extremely popular, and is also just a very useful language to know in general. True. But JavaScript, Go, Kotlin, and Swift are also good languages to start with. But again, it's about becoming a problem solver, not about memory. Yeah, it's this, this guy's good. Who's, who the fuck is this guy? Give 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 him give him a shout. It's good. Um, it's a good video because most of these videos are bad, and I was really hoping it was a bad video so we could bash him, but we can't because it's it's good. Um, let me can I. Can I replay this a little bit? It's it's true, right? This one, JavaScript, mm, go maybe, but I think as a beginner programmer and you have no program experience, you should start with JavaScript and web development, right? JavaScript, um, HTML, CSS, all that stuff, right? Very important. Uh, so you can go into the JavaScript ecosystem so you can basically completely be brainwashed, frustrated, and depressed. And then we will pull you over to an even more depressed ecosystem. No, it's not true, but... Uh, you know what I mean? JavaScript is the best because you're going to have more, more resources. Everybody knows it. There are shit ton of bad courses and you're going to get a job instantly.
It's a good ass, right? If you know what I mean. Of course, take this with a grain of salt, but you're gonna land a job. You're gonna you're gonna land a job much more faster as a web developer, full stack JavaScript, React, all that stuff, um, than than a Go Kotlin or even I don't know what this fucking bird is actually. To be honest, uh, anyway. And Golang, uh, also as a pure beginner language, I wouldn't do that either, right? Start with JavaScript, hassle with Python a little bit, and then you can go to um, some more niche languages that are written for a particular, for solving particular problems. Man, becoming this a problem never, solver but never. about memorizing syntax and that begs the question how do i become a good problem solver the answer is go solve a bunch of problems turn off youtube and go write some code uh, that's not true i think to be honest guys i'm going to be completely honest i think problem solving skills is something you have or you don't can you learn that i don't think i don't think uh, learning problem solving can be learned i think it's it's you you're going to learn it in your life, I think it's a way of, I think it's a personality aspect. It's a, how do you say that? It's a, a personal a personal threat. You know what I mean? Um, but do you need to be a, a pure program solve, a problem solver, program solver, of course, the programs, problem solver at um, Puissant? I don't think so, because like I said before in a video um, where a company needs different people, different types right and you have these problem solvers builders and you also have um yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna don't shoot me for this i'm gonna get pitchforked for this but from a business perspective this is this is your name the code monkey i'm so sorry i'm so fucking sorry but that the, the, you have engineers the problem solvers you have also the nitpickers which is another video but you also have the code monkeys and they are very important because without code monkeys there is no software there is no software being shipped and the code monkey is a monkey that is is, is, a, is a girl or a guy or something in between. We need to, we, we don't discriminate anyone here. It's somebody that just basically has a list of GitHub issues, clicks on the GitHub issue, checks it out, uh, reads through the documentation, and finally fix the issue, makes a pull request beautifully typed out. It spends more time making it's We need those guys. That's a code monkey. Most of the time, in your early stages of programming, you're going to be a code monkey in ad jobs, right? And it's going to be your personal life is going to determine if you're going to be a problem solver, yes or no. Because I know people that are good at coding, but are bad at problem solving for a very, very, very long time. It's the same in games, guys. It's the same in games. For example, you have people playing League of Legends <laughs> for years. They know everything. They know everything, these guys. They know every champion, every ability, every single cooldown. But still, they are playing in silver. You know? Because these guys, they don't think for themselves. They don't solve the problem. They copy and paste the meta. You know what I mean? They are sitting at skill capped. They are sitting on YouTube and Twitch for hours. And they know every single pro player there is. But they are still silver. And that's because that's the nature of the beast. You know what I mean? You will never be you will never be a diamond player. You will never be a master because you just copy. You copy. You 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 get motivation. You get uh, dopamine from seeing other from seeing other players play, and you are scared to come up with your own builds. You're scared to do your own plays. You're scared to learn it by yourself. That's the reason. I'm so sorry, but it's the truth. Will you ever learn to play guitar by watching other people on YouTube play guitar? The answer is no. You also need to be playing the guitar along with them. Books and tutorials are great, sign up for Fireship Pro, but they're utterly useless if you're not coding along with them. In my tutorials, I try to set you up with something cool to build so you can go have fun and fail on your own. You can build things based on tutorials, you can try to build your own stuff, you can do coding challenges, participate in hackathons, and all kinds of other stuff. If you're serious, you learn coding at fulltimegodev.com, guys. Check that out. Serious, you should be coding at least a couple hours every day. There's a reason they require pilots to have a certain number of flying hours. Experience matters more than anything Thank else God. and luckily for you to get time in the saddle all you have to do is sit on your ass in front of your computer screen and hit the keyboard until something cool happens speaking of which sitting on your ass in front of a computer screen is not natural or healthy who the <laughs> fuck is that guy <laughs> did you see that look at this is this even legal is this even legal fire ship what are you doing well, my, my viewers where is he i cannot even find him i cannot even where is he <laughs> 
baby. That's basically the whole fucking C le syntax language. This is the whole fucking. Sh this is everything together. Man, he watched too many YouTube videos. Holy shit! But hey, we don't discriminate anyone on this channel. Green is not natural or healthy, and that means you need to work extra hard in this line of work to protect your health, both mentally and physically. That's why I prefer to eat at Arby's, the most trusted name in nutrition. I also get plenty of sunshine and exercise to offset the time I spend banging my head against the keyboard in my mom's dark windowless basement. If your health is not optimal, you won't learn as efficiently, and there's no activity in the world that's worth sacrificing your health over. Now let's switch gears and talk about a physicist named Richard Feynman. He's a Nobel Prize winner known for many things, one of which is his learning technique. It goes like this. Choose a concept you want to learn about, explain it to a 12-year-old, reflect, refine, simplify, then organize and review. In other words, you learn most efficiently when you try to teach the very thing you're learning. I can tell you right now that I've learned way more about programming from running this YouTube channel than I ever did working all by myself. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody needs to go and start a YouTube channel. All you have to do is pretend to teach something. But if you can create valuable I content out I of won't, it, like I won't recommend start a YouTube channel, I'm gonna lie. It's, it's, it's hard work. It's hard work, um, but yeah, learning, learning. I don't know. I, I have my own concepts of learning. I think learning. Don't read books because they are too slow. Uh, because your feedback, your your feet. Um, how do you say it? the feedback loop is too short? It's too it's too long for a book. You know what I mean? It's too long. You read a book. Where is your feedback? There is none, right? You read a book at night. There is no feedback. You're reading a book. There is no feedback, so you cannot. Uh, it, learning is not learning things. Uh, it's not memorizing stuff, right? Learning is something, I don't know, it's something unconscious, in my opinion. And it happens by experience. It happens by trauma, you know? Happens by trauma. So that's why everybody needs to start with JavaScript and TypeScript. To be traumatized, right? That's it is like a video or a blog post, that's even better. Or if you already have a job, you'll find that you learn a lot just by mentoring other people. Or if you don't have a job, you can join programming Slack or Discord channels and help people out there. Or answer questions on Stack Overflow. Helping others feels good, and it forces you to be extremely precise about what you actually know. Here's how <laughs> it might on his back. <laughs> Choose a topic, like I want to program a video game. Do some research and experimenting, and write a summary explaining the technology to a 12-year-old. Then go and build something, and get to a full working demo as quickly as possible. It doesn't need to be perfect because in the final step you'll go back and refactor and simplify and find ways to improve your process and get feedback from someone more experienced than you if possible so approach it like a teacher even though you have no idea what you're currently teaching now i said something very subtle but very important and that is to build a full working demo as quickly as possible. Learning is supposed to be painful, but there also needs to be some kind of reward for that pain. And the more quickly you can get to those rewards, the better. Because what you want is a positive feedback loop that basically yes. makes you addicted. Yes, that's what I'm talking about all the time. This Fireship dude, that's why he has 2 million subscribers. That's what's waiting for me. I, I, that's what's waiting for me. It's only just a couple of decades. You know what I mean? That's what it is. It's like triggering your fucking reward system. Not the, the, this reward loop, I don't know, it's maybe a better approach, but I'm telling you it's like, you need to trigger your reward system. It's very important because learning, some people learn faster, I know, some people learn quicker, all good. But the most important thing is why do people not learn something? It's because they don't have interest. And why they don't have interest? Because they lose their interest. Why? Because they don't trigger the reward system. Is what it is. You know what I mean? It's, it's the same thing like, like, like hooking up with a girl, right? In the discotheque or something, like in the club, you know? Uh, you try to seduce. But if you seduce and there is no reward, you're going to stop seducing and locking yourself up in the basement. You know what I mean? That's the same thing. Ah, breaking, you see? Uh, huh. That's what it is. So you need to keep injecting yourself with dopamine. That means you, if you want to learn to program, don't try to just do what, you, what you're interested in. I, uh, in, my, in, in. Back in my days, it was making games. So I made a lot of games, a lot of bullshit games, you know, because it, it, it's, it's fun to see, oh, this player is losing HP in the terminal. Hey, that was a dopamine hit for me, right? And then there are two players losing health. What the hell? And then I, did, they, they, I could kill them instantly. You know what I mean? I could make them invincible. That was cool. Having these superpowers, I could program them. Unlimited ammo. I could even make a special pistol that basically aimbots everyone at, you know what I mean? Triggering your reward system. 
most important thing. Coding. There are ways we can hack the most primitive parts of our brain. What I do almost every day before I go to bed is write down a few small goals that I want to achieve the next day. The important thing is that the goals are achievable because then writing a check mark next to that goal feels good. When good things happen, your brain releases dopamine and you want to try to find dopamine. activities that after hard work give you that dopamine hit because otherwise you'll have a negative feedback loop in which case you're going to absolutely hate coding in no time. That'd be like learning how to press the strings on a guitar without ever knowing how to play an actual song. The idea is to work hard and be rewarded, but you don't want to work too hard. It's extremely important, especially for programming, to pace yourself and take regular breaks. For most people, that likely means one or two hours of programming, followed by a nice long Rookie break. Numbers. I remember in my early days being absolutely determined to not let the error messages win. I'd go late into the night, stack overflowing every possible combination of questions, only to give up and get a good night's sleep, and then come back and immediately solve the problem in the morning. And this isn't unique to me, it happens to everybody, because mental spacing is actually a very important thing. You can be mentally exhausted, while at the same time, your ego is saying, you got this bro, don't be a loser. But the reality is that the most efficient thing to do is go outside, get some sunshine, jump in a cold body of water, and get some sleep. When you wake up, you'll be ready to crush it once again. Now that you know how to learn to code, all you have to do is go to Google, type in what you want to learn, and let it be your guide. Because that's basically all you ever do as a software engineer. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to get the next yada, video. Yada, 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 yada. Okay, okay. Hey, go, I think it was a good video. Uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of, it's basically, everything thing he was telling was, was actually true um, dopamine reward system javascript pick a simple language and if, even if you're already uh, advanced in javascript or something then good for you <laughs> all right are there any questions or something uh or any questions you want to see any any concerns i need to release you from you know what i mean because it's time for my proteins um we are basically a, a lab rat. That's also true. Adding stuff to your backend memory. Yes. John Doe, looking sharp on that camera. Thanks, man. It's uh, the new lens, by the way. And also, yeah, it's a new lens. It's the Sigma. Sigma lens. Um... Yeah. And... Uh, yeah <laughs> like i said uh for the people i want to see how how because i saw in the video i saw something from um, how to get a 100k land a 100k job uh, i think that's something completely different maybe we should cover that in and we should cover that soon by the way um uh, because there are there are some some if you're just gonna do what everybody's doing you're, you're not gonna you're not gonna make a lot of money as an engineer right and the most of the money as an engineer doesn't lie in it depends if you work for for a fan company or something but most of the time if you really want to be rich as an engineer as an engineer as a programmer you need to build your startup right and i recommend everybody uh, trying to do that right trying to at least a side hustle because a lot of people they on, on, on discord they say yeah but how do you keep motivation for my side projects because i start so many side projects yeah, of course I, I, I everybody starts so many side projects right we all know how it goes, right? You have a good idea, you're full of dopamine, adrenaline, you wake up early in the morning because you're so hyped to work on your new project. The first thing you do is you order a new domain name, yourproject.com, because hey, that needs to be secured. You know what I mean? That's very important because can you imagine my project that doesn't even exist yet will be successful. I need to have myproject.com, right? That's what's happening. And then before we even start to make our program, we're gonna check where we're gonna host it, right? We're going to set up a new Ubuntu server, probably on DigitalOcean, or maybe we're gonna use AWS, AWS, or maybe we're gonna use something, uh, Firebase, a new Fire whatever, database, you know what I mean? We're gonna use all this fancy stuff, maybe it's gonna use AMD Lambda, and of course, Kubernetes. We're gonna use Kubernetes, of course. Why didn't I think about that? So you Docker, Kubernetes, everything. On, on AWS, you know what I mean? It's all been taken care of. And you lose interest in your project and you're gonna start the next one. So you're, in, you're there with a domain name you never use. You're probably gonna get some extra papers in your mailbox because you forgot to pay it. And it's gonna turn up in a big technical financial mess. That's exactly how it is. And I'm the Oracle. I'm the Oracle. 
Next time, react to Tsoding. Uh, yeah, Tsoding is good, man. Tsoding has a lot, a lot of respect for that guy because he's the, actually the only one that doesn't play the YouTube game. He just codes, right? It's very nice. Very, very skillful programmer, by the way. Um, first thing I do is delete the test directory. <laughs> yeah, man. Like I said, you just need to uh, start your side project, but also make it a startup. You know what I mean? Let it make a revenue. Let it, let it generate money. You know what I mean? Let it generate money, very important, because that's a motivational trigger. People using your project is the biggest motivation, right? And don't be worried about the speed of your program. Don't be worried about where you're gonna host it. You're just gonna host it. You're gonna CP, you're gonna SCP it over to a fucking digital ocean bare metal server up on Hetzner or something, or, on, or just a virtual uh, server on digital ocean. You're gonna SCP it over. No Docker, no shit, no deployment just scp the binary over you know what i mean that's the folder over and do your start that's what you need to do right and make some money yes how much man do i need zero because there's calculus there's a calculator you know what i mean two plus two is four and four plus four is eight and that's the only thing you need to know how do you get your first commoner for a side hustle you need to don't be afraid right a lot of people are afraid a lot of people have the biggest IDs and they, they, they don't even realize that, that they're sitting on millions. Because the reason why you don't make money with your side project is because you don't release it and you don't market it. Because people buy everything, guys. There's something I learned in my fucking life. People buy everything. There's always somebody. Listen, take a piece of paper right now. There is always somebody that is going to pay you money for something. Always. 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 No matter what it is. No matter what it is. You can make a new editor. People are going to pay you money for that. You're going to find some customers. You can make a, a, a to-do list app. One of the millions that there already are, but people going to pay money for that. Because by the end of the day, somebody that wants, for example, how does it work? James has a lot of tasks. Because James is James. And most of the time, he sits at the water cooler. That's why they also call him James at the water cooler. And James wants to be a more organized person, right? So James goes to Google or James goes to Twitter, or James is basically whatever he's doing on his iPad playing this fucking Shadow, Shadow Raid Legends thingy, and suddenly he sees Todoist app, 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 app. Get your free trial right now and get more organized, you lazy bitch. And James is going to click on your ad, or James is going to click on your Reddit post, or James is going to click on your Twitter post, or James is whatever the fuck he's going to do, but he's going to click on that, and he's going to start his free trial, and you're going to convert him, because his life is so good, so organized, that he's going to pay 19, that's too much, 9.99 a month to you, for a to-do app, because you were the first one where he clicked on. Maybe there is a better to-do app. We don't fucking care. You know what I mean? That's the biggest problem. Oh no, I'm not going to launch my project because there are already 10, 20 million people doing it. Yeah, that's true. But they are not you. You are better. You know what I mean? Nobody can compete with me. You know what? That's how you need to think. Nobody's going to compete with you. If I make a to-do app, it's going to be the best to-do app ever. That's what I'm not going to do it. I give people a chance. Don't be afraid to go out there, you know? Everybody's buying everything. <laughs> to do it. <laughs> it's just a JSON database. You can just make a, a map and go, right? Map, string any, make a startup. Well, we're gonna fucking make a startup. Look at this. Hop. Um, we're gonna basically... Uh, where are we? In the terminal, right? Let's quill this. Quill. Let's quill this. So we're gonna do Hollywood, we're gonna do this CD, we're gonna uh, here, we're gonna make it there. We're gonna call this um, super fast JSON 
super fast db hop cd into super fast db then we're gonna do we're gonna make a vim.go like that hop like this and then we're gonna say something like um, um db is going to be a map of string actually we can't do that we're gonna say this we can do that actually to be honest uh up map string any just like that and now we can store everything inside of this map string any so what we could do is basically do an http handle uh func is that true i'm not quite sure get we're gonna make a post actually um i'm gonna make a post what am i doing here it's always gonna be a post because we don't use any framework so it's gonna be slash store handler handle store something like that handle store right and i'm gonna say http listen and surf and we're gonna make a port and it doesn't matter what what it is it's gonna be uh 3000 and we're gonna say null here because it's a handle we're not gonna use and um yeah this db to be honest we, we don't give a shit so we're gonna make this db a global variable right because it doesn't matter because people are gonna buy it anyway uh, var db is a map string any that's fine and then we're gonna do uh, we're gonna make this handler here func uh, handle store i'm a bit i'm a bit rusty not quite uh, not gonna lie http uh, response writer right that's the thing response writer up and then we're gonna make a pointer to an http uh, request man what's going on here font is so huge HTTP request just like that and then we're gonna say um, if r is going to be json dot new decoder we're gonna make a map here uh, var params actually we don't care we're gonna say m because we can it's gonna be a map of string any right just like that we're gonna make a new decoder it's gonna be the res body and we're gonna decode that into um, this uh map here like that and if the error is not nil to be honest we cannot return an error so what we're gonna do we don't care so we're gonna do just this hop 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 we don't errors we don't do errors here because we are a startup you know we need to be lean and mean and that's it you know and then you do go run main wait we, do, we are false because we are going to basically um you get the point right we could do a for loop here over this map and it's actually yeah kv just like that um in range m right because this is going to be a json json mapped uh, map you know what i mean and then we're going to say or db we're going to say key which is a string uh, sv right this thing just like that no need for mutexes because doesn't really matter go run main.go that's your startup right now you can make it a nice binary and distribute that and charge people some money for it you know what i mean you're all short in a startup <laughs> no but there are like i said of course the better your idea the the more success you're going to have because if you want to make if you solve a problem that people actually want to uh need but Problems are already being solved. The chances are very, very, very low that you're gonna figure something out that not being solved, right? But it doesn't matter. It's all about making things a little bit better. It's all about presence. It's all about marketing. It's all about marketing. And I'm gonna repeat this. It's all about marketing. And I'm gonna say it one more time. It's all about marketing. It's all about marketing. Reddit, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. It's all about marketing, you know. All right, any more questions? Otherwise, I'm going to wrap it up. Hey, my camera is still going very good at two hours. That's good. Normally, it's overheated, but it is what it is. Uh, can you tell me this, uh, the name of this team? This team is Groovebox. Uh, it's Groovebox. Groovebox. Uh, I'm gonna write, write quit actually to be honest. Let's go CD. Uh, it's gonna be dot config, I guess. Uh, and Vim, right? And then, yeah, Vim, this thing. You need to Lua this up. Uh, groove box. This one. Contrast heart. Palette overrides gray. 
Um, because this is going to be comments, right? I can't. This Lua, Anthony. Anthony, this is fucking Lua. Comments are green. Green. And by that, I mean green. No. It's more clear than my life. What's the camera you're using? Ah, it's the same camera. It's the same camera. It's just another lens, my man. It's just another lens. Uh, wait, let me. I'm going to show you something and then we're going to stop. So I have two of these lenses in my closet. You know what I mean? I have this lens. Uh, this is the first lens I'm using, right? This is basically the Sony uh, as a 1.8 thingy. Uh, it's a 50 millimeter lens, I guess. Um, which I used in the beginning, right? That was my first stream lens because I already had that for some reason. I, I don't take any picture. Then I use this one because this one, you cannot zoom out and that needs to be two, four, that needs to be three meters, three fucking meters away from you. But I can't in this, I couldn't anymore. So I use this one, which is a small fucked up lens. You could zoom in. But now I have the Sigma lens, which is, A good lens. You know what I mean? Uh, what is your favorite uh, Golang project that deserves more attention than it currently has? Uh, my Golang project or some Golang project? Um, Hardeep Narang. And by the way, guys, if you're not yet subscribed, hey, consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up. You can uh, basically do me an enormous favor with it. And for the people that really want to level up, uh, you know, I have the full time Godev uh, program running out, right? Uh, full time Golev. Look at this, guys. I, I cannot, I cannot emphasize enough. If you want to be a Golang professional, a Golang industry professional, this is what it is for you, man. Um, yeah, thirty percent off. But the wait, um, Sigma fixed lens. Yeah, it's a Sigma fixed lens, right? There's no zoom. It's fixed. It's a fixed lens. It has a good. It's just a good streaming lens, right? It's close. It's a camera. It's a um, look at this, guys. Woohoo! Look at this shine! But the problem is, my mic is a little bit with this light and shadows, and oh man, look at this. Oh, I'm so fucking strong. <laughs> Go to the fucking gym, okay? Go to the fucking gym. No excuses. Be jacked. Uh, built. Um, via respect, awesome videos. Thank you. Yeah! Build your own. Or use existing packages. What's your call on it? It depends, right? Um, it depends. It depends. It depends. If you uh, if you want to learn program, if you want to be a good programmer, if you want to learn how to program, build your own. If you want to make money, use everything else. And that's 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 the sad truth. That's the saddest part, right? If you if you want to be a good programmer. Then you need to build everything yourself, so you know how things work under the hood, how, so you can. So people are gonna rely on your systems. You know what I mean? It's gonna be a, a, a big paycheck. More uh, if you know, if you if you can do things like distributed systems, blockchain technology, all that stuff, you're going to be you're going to get paid more. It is what it is. There is no. This is not a scam. It's, it's reality, right? You could start next GS and uh, writing use effect all the time. Good for you, but you're gonna be fucking broke for the rest of your fucking life, right? So what you need to do is you you, you learn JavaScript, you learn uh, Next.js, you learn React, and you build your own fucking startup. You know, then you're gonna make money. And then you don't need to be a good developer. You just need to know where to find things. You hack things together, put it out in the open, charge people ten euros a month, and get fucking rich. You know what I mean? And you're not gonna get rich from these ten euros a month. You're gonna get rich from the evaluation of your startup. After four or five years, you're gonna have some MMR, you're gonna have a big ARR, big MMR. You're gonna have some traction, you're gonna have customers, paying customers, and uh, you're gonna have some tech. You know what I mean? You have tech. No, you have no tech, you're conf you have NPM. That's what you have, right? Not, not modules. If, is, if somebody steals your node modules, you have a big problem, but it doesn't matter because investors doesn't know that. You know what I mean? Oh, node yes. Oh yeah, that's a good stack, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna invest, you know what I mean? And then you sell your shares. Vamos a la playa. That's how you get rich, right? And then you don't, don't need to be a good programmer, you just need to be a good marketeer and you need to hack websites together, you know? Um, but if you wanna be a good programmer, on the other hand, then you need to basically uh, write things yourself so you can be good. 
When will blockchain videos are available on full time Godev? Uh, oh yeah, I need to upload them. Um, that's, they're already they're already done. That's the thing. But uploading a, a video takes me a long time. Um, I will probably start. I will start uploading them basically tonight already. A couple, if I can, right? And otherwise, they will be the whole full time Godev program will be uh, online by the end of the month. There's already a big chunk online, by the way. Um, all the, the beginner, all the good currency, and also almost all of the JSON API. Uh, probably from, from tomorrow, I will start deploying, uploading the uh, J microservices, and um, in between, we'll upload the blockchain stuff. So everything will be online very soon, my mans. All right, are there any questions? Then I'm going to eat my proteins, also going to do my nicotine, because I'm a nicotine addict. Everything that ends on in. Caffeine, nicotine, dopamine, serotonin. How are you, my man? How are you? Best goaling teacher by far. Thank you very much, man. I much appreciate that. Uh, you guys make me, sometimes you guys make me humble, and sometimes you guys make me emotional. All right, thanks everyone for watching um, the stream. Uh, it was a, a, we didn't code too much, I know, but I still need to figure my way what I'm gonna do because if I code for two hours, uh, not a lot of view, so I need to be more entertainment. I don't know what, what where where this is going. You know what I mean? I have no clue. Um, I have, I, I'm legit a little bit in a in a dilemma what I need to do because I don't really like to play the YouTube game, but I'm being forced you know what i mean i'm negan i'm being forced i have no choice to fight them but i'm gonna win i don't know because i'm not on that episode yet all right thanks everyone for watching and i see you in the next video live stream or oh, whatever bye bye love you all okay no i don't do cooking i don't do i did it before when i was younger right just to test i know you know what i mean experimentation that's what i always tell you how do you learn creativity and experimentation